Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Saban. Today, we'll be talking about idle clicker games, why they're so popular, and how you're getting on the action. We'll go through some of the history of the genre and some best practices and the evolution that we've seen in the genre. So first of all, a little introduction about myself. Uh, you know, I've been in the industry for more than 12 years. Started at Intel. Well, actually, started out writing for gaming websites, then went to Intel doing um, uh, marketing for games and campaign strategy, and then moved on to gaming developer relations and business development. Then headed uh, business development and developer relations for Congregate, um, and then was the vice president of R2 Games USA, which was a US subsidiary of a Chinese uh, free-to-play mobile and browser games publisher. And I was involved in the uh, publishing of, of, signing and publishing of a lot of free-to-play mobile games, including Clicker Heroes, uh, Political Cats and Game of Thrones Ascent. And now uh, I'm helping developers and publishers in my consul consultancy uh, to self-publish, license IP, uh, improve their free-to-play monetization, ad strategy, license IP, and get featured, and so forth. So, you know, I'm going to assume that everyone here has heard or played an idle clicker game, uh, but I'm going to provide some history here. So first of all, what is a clicker game? A clicker game is also known as a clicker or tapper um, or idle if they're the more passive type game or incremental game. But most games in the genre now combine elements from uh, many of them. It's a relative new, relatively new genre that's been around for less than a decade and has really exploded in popularity in the last few years. This presentation is not a uh, deep dive into the mechanics of the actual um, idle clicker games, but if you're interested in that, I highly recommend a presentation from a good friend and former colleague at Congregate, Anthony Pecorilla, which you can find at this link. And I'll be posting this presentation online uh, for those that are interested, and, or you can just email me. Um, and this presentation is uh, by Anthony. It's available online for free at the GDC Vault, so I highly recommend it. So, idle clicker games got started on the PC. You know, some of us played, uh, played cow clicker when it first came out on Facebook, and then a lot of us played cookie clicker on PC. And then uh, a couple years later, a game called Clicker Heroes came out, which is a massive success on the browser. And then move on to Steam, where it was a huge success. You can see here that it was the third most popular free-to-play free -play game on Steam, right after Dota 2 and Team Fortress 2. I stayed up there for quite a while, for um, almost a year, and it was in top 10 for two years, and even today, it's still the 12th most played game on Steam, as of yesterday. So, you know, very strong uh, start on PC, and eventually moved to mobile and gained massive popularity there as well through games like Rank It Rain, Tap Titans 1 and 2, Adventure Capitalist, and Bitcoin Billionaire. And a lot of brands have been getting involved and getting into action. Uh, you have console brands like Katamari Damacy and Crazy Taxi, uh, celebrities like Chuck Norris, and brands like you know, the WWE and He-Man. And there have been many, many, many idle clicker games in the top charts, both in top downloads and top grossing. Here we have the top grossing uh, chart from mid-April. This was a very busy week for idle clicker games because there are four branded uh, idle clicker games that came out uh, that week. Uh, there were Trail of Park Boys and with Wiz Khalifa's Wheat Farm that charted at number five and six most downloaded game in the US. Uh, Adventure Capitalist has been around for more than two years and still performing strong. Number 15 was Office Space Idle Profits. And then the fourth game was Nonstop Chuck Norris, which was at number 20. So not still a lot of uh, games and innovation coming out in the genre and charting pretty well uh, in both downloads and top charts, uh, top grossing charts. So an example that I want to give is Trailer Park Boys. You saw that they got a lot of downloads, but they've also done very well when it comes to revenue. So this game launched on 420 of this year, and it has the unique honor of being the idle game with the highest grossing or highest peak grossing ranking in the US App Store at number 72 on iPhones in the US. 
uh, which was, I think the record was previously held either by Venture Capitalists or Collector Heroes. Um, and ever since uh, Trailer Park Boys launched, it's consistently stayed uh, in the top 100 to 200. Uh, you know, it was very strong in its first month. And as of yesterday, it was still 165 in the US top grossing games. So why are idle clicker games so popular? Well, let's dive into that. First, they're popular with players because for many, many reasons, but I'm gonna dumb it down here. Number one, they're very easy to pick up and play. Uh, you know, all you have to do is tap, click, or just um, upgrade uh, resource generators. The short sessions are perfect for mobile in, well, with today's gamers having such short attention spans. And they make people feel good about themselves because it's a constant cycle of positive reinforcement and progression. If you think about an idle game, it's basically a RPG game distilled down to its barest and purest forms of achievement and progression. You just you know, keep improving your stats, keep improving your businesses, your characters, or whatnot and keep progressing. And people love that because every time you play the game, uh, it's kind of like a celebrati celebratory moment because you've accumulated so much currency that you can um, spend and improve. And they're very popular with developers and publishers as well because first of all, most games in genre, uh, especially top games, have very strong retention metrics. Uh, top games tend to have D1 retention of 50 to 70% or more, D7 retention of 30 to 40% or more, and then D30 retention of 15 to 20% or more. Uh, here's an example from that Congregate provided uh, for Adventure Capitalist. You can see that their D1 and D7 retention are in line which, with what I mentioned here. Also, they're great for ad monetization. When you have very high retaining games that people play multiple times in a day, there's a potential for generating a lot of revenue because there are a lot of ad impressions. Uh, idle clicker games, uh, there have been many that have been the top 200 grossing in the US. And you have to keep in mind that this is based only, only off of in-app purchases within the app. But with ads, especially rewarded videos, you can double or more than double ad revenue. And part of it's also because advertisers love you know, showing their video ads in these type of games, since they appeal to a gamer that you know, likes progression and achievement, you know, tends to like RPGs, and a lot of publishers are publishing SOGs, RPGs, games with those uh, similar mechanics of progression and achievement. So they're willing to pay more for, uh, to advertise in these games. Um, here is a chart, a graph from Adventure Capitalist. You can see that uh, about half of the revenue from the game comes from ads. And then another reason why people like making these type of games is because the app stores love featuring them. You know, definitely many games that are being featured and re-featured uh, when they launch, when they're updated. Many have received big banners, editor's choice, and if you look here at the bottom, uh, Apple even had a big banner on the 10 greatest clickers in which they were promoting a bunch of different idle clicker games. And you know they're big fans of the genre. And there's a lot of potential in making idle clicker games. Top games that have uh, generated millions of downloads and millions of revenue. In fact, the top games have generated more than eight figures in revenue. And now taking publishers out of the equation, why they're popular with developers. Because they're ideal for self-publishing, for developers that want to go out on their own. Uh, these type of games usually tend to have much lower production costs and shorter development cycles in which you can make a game in a matter of months. Um, for example, with Clicker Heroes, that the first iteration of Clicker Heroes was made actually in a month. They had, the developer of Playsaurus had previously made a game called Cloudstone, which you can see on top, um, which you know, wasn't that big of a success. Um, and they took the, a lot of the you know, characters and art assets from the game and quickly made Click the Heroes, which you know, became a worldwide phenomenon. 
So leveraging ex existing assets that you have from another game can be a great way to make an idle game. You know, a lot of the, these uh, popular clicker games actually are spin-offs of other games. You know, Clicker Heroes used to be Cloudstone. Uh, Time Clickers used to be a first-person shooter tell, called Time Rifters. Best Fiends Forever, of course, uh, came from Best Fiends. Uh, Crusaders the Lost Idol, um, you know, um, you know, was used a lot of arts and characters from Bushwhacker and Bushwhacker 2. So this can lower your production costs and help you get to market even faster. So you know, the genre has been around for a few years now, and we've seen a lot of in innovation and evolution of the genre. So we're going to dive a bit into that and also share some best practices. Uh, this might be hard to see, but this is a chart showing a lot of the popular top idol games and what features they have or don't have. Um, and as the genre keeps evolving, you know, developers keep adding more and more features into these games. You know, they're going from simple, very simple indie games to games with a lot more uh, free-to-play mechanics to uh, help improve retention and monetization, um, integrating brands, and also combining different type of genres. You know, Clicker Heroes was the first major uh, clicker game to combine RPG elements and created the clicker RPG subgenre. Adventure Capitalist was the first major idle business sim. What um, I want to talk about more is about the innovation and uh, what I've seen when it comes to monetization within these type of games. So when it comes to idle clicker games, uh, monetization usually features three different types of currency. You have your soft currency that you gain through gameplay, your hard currency that you buy through in-app purchases, or you accumulate slowly as you play the game. And there's the prestige or essential currency, which you gain uh, when you reset the game and you start from level one again. But in exchange, you get this currency that gives you a big bonus uh, to your stats, or you can use it to buy items or weapons that give you that bonus. And as for the hard currency, uh, these are some examples of how they're used within idle clicker games. You have fast forward or time warp, which you skip ahead, and you get a whole bunch of soft currency uh, instantly for in exchange for some hard currency. There's a, a multiplier that speeds up how much soft currency you earn or how much damage you do. And then there are also temporary versions of that. Or instant prestiging or quick ascensions when you um, gain the ascension of prestige currency without actually having to reset the game and start from square one. And a mechanics become very popular within the genre are gotcha mechanics. So you know when you do a random draw of a card or an item, um, and there are different uh, levels of rarity, like in CCG games or collector card battle games. It uh, creates a very simple and repeatable sync as players chase a you know very valuable item or weapon that they really want to get. And we're going to dive a little deeper into that because we've seen a lot of innovation with CCG mechanics and gacha in idle games in the last you know, year. So um, we first saw um, games like Click of Heroes, Crusaders Lost Idols, and Tap to Reach just introduce CCG mechanics. Uh, but most recently, we've seen evolutions of that in Trailer Park Boys and Office Space. And that helped me, uh, really help improve uh, free to play in that purchase monetization. Uh, previously, in games like Tap Titans and Nonstop Knights, they're kind of simple and kind of not part of the core loop, but they have been more uh, and better integrated into games like Office Space and Trailer Park Boys, which I'll show you in a minute. And also turned into a very effective appointment mechanic. If you know every four hours, every six hours, you can come back to a game and get a free card or a free pack of cards. You know, it trains people into coming back into the game multiple times a day. So these screens are from Office Space Idle Profits. You know, in this game, you, uh, it's a kind of like an idle business sim. Um, you have different floors, which are different businesses that produce uh, money. And you can add managers to each floor to make each floor more productive and generate more gold or be faster. 
um, and you get them through you know um, gacha draws, and you can also level them up if you have enough of that card. And they do a very great job of introducing this to the player as part of the tutorial, uh, in which you know you get to open a medium pack for free, and you get an epic epic card right off the start. So you know you feel great uh, right off the start. It then teaches you how to go into the building to um, assign that manager to a business. So you know you got a you get a free sample. You makes you feel good, and you understand the benefits of having managers and how they can improve your progress within the game. Uh, these are screenshots from Trilog Park Boys, Greasy Money. Uh, in this game, they're doing something a uh, little different that's very interesting. In this game, uh, the business managers are cards, but the business themselves are also cards. And when you have enough of them, you actually have to use liquor to upgrade them. And liquor in the game, it's not quite a soft currency, it's not a hard currency, so I call it a pseudo hard currency. Um, and you know, it's an interesting way to um, kind of gate progress, but also monetize players. And here are some more screenshots. Um, and in this game, they besides the gacha draws where you can get the cards, you can also buy them directly in the store. Uh, they, you can, there are three that show up the store and they refresh every five hours. That, that also gets people into the habit of going to the store uh, frequently. And here are some more screenshots. So now let's talk, talk about ad monetization in these games since I mentioned they can be half your revenue or more. So when you have uh, an idle clicker game, I highly recommend that you consider adding reward videos to the game. Uh, especially because if you have high, re high retention numbers. Uh, in the great mediation platform and multiple ad networks and negotiate better uh, deals and payouts with them. And you want to integrate ads into a core loop of the gameplay or a regularly repeating screen so it shows up often. Have multiple placements and feature them prominently. Offer meaningful rewards so people are incentivized to watch the ads. Uh, but be careful not to make them too meaningful because you don't want to cannibalize your in-app purchases. Um, if you have events or updates, make sure to incorporate them into new content as well. Uh, you want to limit pre-caching of videos to minimize over-the-air data usage, which can really add up, uh, especially if um, your, pre, you know, your SDK is pre-loading pre, pre or pre-caching a lot of videos. Avoid long ads and bad ads that may require users to answer questions or jump through a lot of hoops before they can actually watch an ad. And when it comes to rewarded video, the type of rewards that are usually offered are you get a short burst of currency or you get a little bit of hard currency, a temporary boost, like you get two X gold for X amount of time, a chances at a mini game or spin a wheel, or you know, if you are away from the game and come back, all the currency you gain while you're away, you can double that by watching an ad. Now lastly, I wanna talk about limited time events in idle clickers because this is something that's uh, becoming more and more popular that really helps uh, with improving retention monetization within idle clicker games. These can be weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, tied to seasonal events and holidays. And they are usually uh, have progression that's separate from the main game. They might use the same mechanics as the main game, but it's entirely separate progression. And um, if done well, it usually leads to increased retention and monetization both for in-app purchases and ads because they keep players engaged, keep them active, coming back to the game often, and potentially uh, purchasing more. Um, here's some screens from um, Adventure Capitalist. You can see that every time there's a limited time event, there is a bump when it comes to the average uh, time that players are spending the game, the daily ARP DAO, and you know, the revenue. Um, one go over some examples of limited time events uh, within a uh, game. So this is from Office Space. They had an Easter event in which you get a, 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 you know, a reward that helps you with the main game if you achieve 20, 40, or 60 levels within uh, 
the side progression of the Easter event. Um, of course, they have a loot box to make you know things more interesting, and you know um, in this event you gain paint over time, which then you can trade for eggs, which then you use to trade for chocolate bunnies, which then gives you the ability to buy draws from the Easter loot box, which are eggs that give you uh, bonuses for progressing within the event. And then they also have unique in-app purchases specifically just for the event. And then these kind of actually go away after the event ends. But they do help you progress faster during the event, which then helps um, unlock the awards that you get that help you progress faster within the main game. And they also have leaderboards for their events that help um, for the drive engagement and competition with employers because the awards, uh, rewards are tiered in, depending how well you do within the event. Here's another example from Dungeon Inc. So this is another you know idle business sim, but uh, the interesting thing here is that they have asynchronous PvP instead of a single player um, progression for um, you know competition, and so you attack. Uh, other players' bases and see how far you can get. And you know you earn prices based on tiers at the end of the weekly tournament. And you can see here that I didn't do very well. Came in 143,306 place. Um, but you know usually uh, driving that sense of competition may drive people to you know uh, be more engaged with the game, play more sessions, and potentially also spend. So in conclusion, you know, why do an idle clicker game? You know, uh, app stores and players love them. There's potential for millions in downloads and revenue. It's a you know, sure the bomb cycle, so it's much lower risk for studios. And there's a lot of room for innovation as you've seen from some of the last examples. And I think the genre will just keep on growing and growing and we'll see a lot more interesting mechanics that come out of that. Anyways, that's it. Uh, if you want a copy of the presentation, you can email me at this email, and we're going to open it up to questions. David, I'd like to, I'd like to start with a question. Sure. Um, in, in the presentation, you were telling us that um, uh, the, the clicker games are actually getting far more involved, and, and, and they're, they're much more engaging than the clicker games perhaps have been in the past. Do you see any... Do you see the more complicated or engaged games actually crowding out the simple games from the clicker market, or do you see that there's room for both the simple and the more engaging games? Um, I think there's room for both, just because there's a lot of interest in these type of games, especially on mobile, because you know, people want uh, games so they can play in short sessions that are you know, bite-sized sessions that are perfect for if you're like waiting for the bus, you're on the subway, and so forth. Like really fits people's lifestyles these days. Great. Wonderful. David, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Round of applause for David.